Well, hello dear motherfuckers, and welcome to your TLC 2014 predictions video. Well, I got a feeling that this pay-per-view will probably be decent at the very least. I'm not really expecting a bad show. There seems like there's enough decent matches and talent on the card to, you know, just at the very least get by as being a somewhat decent show. I'll be very surprised if this ends up sucking dick. I'm actually saying something positive I hadn't said in a while. How many times do I come in these predictions videos and just fucking tear it apart, just rip these pay-per-views limb from limb? But this time, I'm not saying that. I'm actually expecting a decent show. Card doesn't look that bad, you know. Um, so... We're going to have uh, Ryback and Kane in the chairs match. Um, you know, chairs matches, this just sounds kind of cheap in the way, you know, because like a TLC match, this is just like a really watered down TLC match. It's like without ladders or tables, just chairs. So, you know, this is why I don't like a TLC pay per view. Or a Hell in the Cell pay-per-view. You know, I like how it used to be back in the day where you didn't know, you know, where you're going to get certain match types. You know, on certain pay-per-views, they would just pop up. I mean, certain pay-per-views were associated with certain match types. WrestleMania, Money in the Bank. Uh, no Way Out started to get associated with the Elimination Chamber. Bad Blood, every single Bad Blood pay-per-view, there was three of them had Hell in a Cell matches on the card. That's So I could kind of see the logic of why WWE wanted to make the pay-per-views have names after the match types, but, you know, I'm not really a big fan of it. I think we should just go back to old names like Vengeance and things like that, but whatever, um... I see, of course, Ryback winning this match. To have Kane win this would just be absurd. And why is Kane even on the roster? Why does Kane have a match? Kane is not a draw anymore, motherfuckers. I don't care who says what. I know a lot of people like to argue that he's one of the few remaining Attitude Era wrestlers. And, you know, that's a good point right there. We, you know, we always want a bit of attitude in there. But come on. Fucking Kane has no business being in the fucking ring already. Get his old fucking ass out of here, his old fiery ass. Get him the fuck out of here, motherfuckers. There's no, you know, reason why Kane needs to be there. There's there's nothing for him to do. You know, they've been so confused about his character, having him take the mask off, put it back on, take the mask off, put it back on. Pretty soon he's going to be wearing the fucking mask on his penis, and he's going to be running around the locker room fucking flashing people. That's, that's what I see coming from this. There's nothing left for Kane, motherfuckers. Ryback will beat him. Not really expecting a great match here. How great could it possibly be? I mean, it could be a decent brawl. I feel like a two-star match, really, I'm expecting here. At the, at, at the very most, uh, then it's going to be Miz and Sandow versus the Usos for the tag titles. I really doubt that they're going to give the belts back to the Usos, so I'm going to have to go with the Miz and, and the Miz Dow, Sandow on this one. Um, I think that the slow build is a bit too slow with Miz Dow and the Miz. Uh, they should just fucking speed that shit up already because it's boring as fuck. And yes, Miz Dow could be funny at times, but like I said, it's not really that funny. It, they're really trying hard here for laughs. I mean, the goddamn guy is imitating the suplex and fucking flipping himself over in the ring. He's throwing himself out of the ring. I mean, it's just over the top. It's more like a fucking cartoon than it is, you know, they used to have, like, real legitimate, mature humor. You know, people would argue during the Attitude Era it was a bit, like, immature teenager humor, but it was better. The things that The Rock would say, it would... There was funny things by Stone Cold being said. Now they're going for physical comedy, slapstick, Three Stooges type of comedy. And I shouldn't even say that. 
Because being a major fan of Three Stooges, that's like a fucking slap in the face to them. You know, they're probably spinning in their graves listening to me say that fucking shit about them. So, no disrespect to the Stooges, but motherfuckers. Uh, hey, and they did have all the fake Three Stooges on at one time, but whatever. You know, this match, once again, I'm not expecting a lot from it. You know, how great could it possibly be? You know, just a passable tag match. Um, then you have Rowan and the Big Show in a stairs match, and this is just a really fucking cheesy <laughs> match type here. Um, I think this is maybe the first time ever they've had a stairs match. You know, now they're just naming fucking matches off for everything. Are they going to have, like, a fucking door match? I'm looking at a door here. Are they going to have a fucking, um... A, a drawer match, you know, with fucking drawers and shit. You know, how about a fucking desk match? I guess that's too much like a tables match. I mean, you know, what what the fuck are they going to have next? Are they going to have a Michael Cole match where they pick up Michael Cole and beat the shit out of people with fucking Michael Cole? I mean, you know, let's just name things after everything here, you know? Uh, like, come on already. Like, you can't... Have a matchup named, well, how about like a barricade match where uh, it's legal to throw the wrestler into the barricade? I mean, come on. I mean, how many fucking things are you going to name after every single fucking object? I mean, come the fuck on already. You know, they had a Singapore cane match. You fucking stairs match. Fucking chair match. Fucking tables match. Fucking ladder match. Fucking TLC match. You know, holy fucking shit. I mean, there's like so many fucking, uh, you know, little match types. I mean, goddamn, whatever just happened to fucking hardcore uh, match, you know, street fight, uh, no holds barred, you know, some shit like that. I mean, come on. So, like, what are you telling me? If they use a tables match and a chairs match, they're going to get disqualified? Or if they use the stairs and a fucking... Uh, uh, chair match they're gonna get DQ. I mean, come on! It doesn't really make any fucking sense. I mean, come on, they're all foreign objects. We don't need to have a fucking match type named after every single fucking conceivable thing under the fucking sun. I mean, come on. We're gonna have a fucking cock match, a fucking ass match, a fucking foot match, a fucking finger match, a fucking elbow match, a fucking shoulder match, a fucking ear match, a fucking eye match. Come the fuck on! I've had enough of these match types. It's getting fucking stupid and retarded already. Could be an interesting match with these two big guys. I have, you know, become a bigger fan of Rowan. Even though he hasn't done anything that great, Rowan is an interesting character in the wrestling world, you know, that has basically no fucking characters. Even the fact that there's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of a character coming out of anybody, a, a tad bit of personality popping out from any wrestler, I'm happy to see it. Um, so I'm expecting uh, Rowan to beat Big Show in this one. To have Big Show win would make as much sense as having Kane beat Ryback, you know. These guys are just old, beaten down, fucking old horses. There's no fucking reason for them to come, you know, out there and beat these uh, younger wrestlers. Um, then you're going to have uh, Luke Harper uh, and Dolph Ziggler in a ladder match. And I think this is where the card is going to take a very appealing turn. I think that this could be match of the night. I think this is a, maybe not match of the night, um, but... You know, one of the... I think it's going to be a good match. If this match is not at least three and a half stars or some shit like that, I'll be very worried. I'm a big fan of Luke Harper and, and Dolph Ziggler. I think Luke Harper, a man of his size, this is probably one of the best fucking wrestlers, you know, with this amount of uh, athletic ability for his size. The guy has a gigantic move set. He's capable of a lot in that ring. And I think a ladder match is it's actually a good match type for him. I, I think that, that guy could do a lot of fucking great things in there with Ziggler. And them in the ladder... Ziggler bumping all over the place. There, there should be, there should be a lot of good quality action in this match. I think that you know this could really be a good fucking match, and I'm I'm looking forward to watching it. I really am. Um. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Um. And I'm expecting Harper to beat 
Ziggler. I don't think Ziggler is going to take the title back. But then again, they have been playing hot potato with it when they were doing Miz and Ziggler. They were going back and forth. Um, then you got Nikki um, versus AJ for the Divas title. Uh, and Nikki, obviously, this is going to win here. I, they're not going to give the belt right back to AJ. I hope not. This is another title they were playing hot potato with, with AJ and Paige, with it going back and fucking forth already. Um, so, I am, you know, not really expecting a great match here, but at least we're going to get a match that lasts more than fucking 30 seconds here, like, uh, like fucking, uh, the last pay-per-view with Survivor Series. Um, then you got Ambrose and Bray Wyatt in a TLC match, and this is why I stopped myself from saying match of the night with Harper and Ziggler. This, for all intents and purposes, should be match of the night. There's no reason why this match should suck or be bad or not at least be four stars. You got two quality talents in there. Two guys who are basically willing to do anything to their bodies. Just like Ziggler and fucking Harper. They're willing to fucking fly through fucking tables. Fly off fucking ladders. Do fucking anything to each other. And even though the build-up for this match has been fucking terrible. What match really does have good build-up? So I'm just expecting a quality match up here. Uh, match of the night, we'll see, you know. Uh, then, um, oh, and I'm expecting Ambrose to beat Bray Wyatt. I would like to see Bray get a convincing victory over somebody, like a major star, but I really do think that Ambrose is probably going to win this one. Maybe the me next match in the series will be won by, uh, by Bray, but I think Ambrose is probably going to take this one. Uh, then it's going to be Cena and Rollins in a tables match. And I don't think this is going to be a bad match. I think that Rollins could at least, you know, get Cena into it. Um, and they could have a decent enough match. Like I said, if Cena has the right opponent, Cena is not below having a, a really good match. I mean, let's face as much as we hate fucking Cena... A lot of times, Cena has a really good match. Um, he's not always directly responsible for it. Like I said, he has to have the right opponent. But given the right opponent, um, fucking uh, John Cena can have fucking great matches. I mean, as much as I hate the man, as much as I dislike him being at the top, let's be fucking honest. John Cena can wrestle a good match. He, he does know what he's doing in there. Um, you know, the thing is, what we hate about him is the five moves of doom and just the fucking same way he always wrestles the matches. Uh, but other than that, for the most part, um, you know, John Cena's had some pretty decent matches throughout the years. We can't deny that. I mean, they're, like, you think of John Cena and you can, like, instantly name at least five to ten great matches that he's been in. Um, and some of them could even be said in the, in, in recent years. I mean, is uh, you know, you got to think about matches against CM Punk that he's had, for example, match against The Rock at uh, well, WrestleMania 28, um, and, and you could just really go on and on. Um, the Hell in the Cell match against Orton wasn't bad. He had a decent match against him at last year's Royal Rumble. Um, you seen I had uh, a decent last man standing match against Bray Wyatt. Uh, even though the fucking finish was bullshit, Cena's had good matches. He's had good matches this year, and yeah, well, that's just the fucking fact of the matter. Uh, even though it is hard to say, Cena has had good matches. Sadly, Cena will beat Rollins in this, but I believe that it will be a pretty decent match. I think Rollins is going to do just enough, but there's no way that fucking um, Cena is going to lose his number one contendership to Brock Lesnar. Um, so if we could expect another Cena victory to cap off uh, this fucking uh, pay-per-view. So overall, you have some pretty like unappealing matches on here, but I really doubt that anything is going to suck that hard. Um, if anything's going to be like you know uh, bad or not that good, I don't think Kane and Ryback is going to be a really good match. <laughs> I'm not expecting anything too fucking, like, stunning from Rowan versus Big Show, but I guess you could say it is a bit of an interesting matchup. 
Um, you know, and certain things will be bland, like Miz Dow, you know, and, and the Miz against the Usos. But for the most part, uh, like the TLC match, the ladder match, and the tables match, they should all be pretty decent matches. Which, you know, really, I'm like expecting this pay per view to be around like a seven, you know, seven and a half, maybe. That's just my predictions of, you know, of course I'm going to do the eventual review and we're going to really see what I think of it. But, you know, until then, uh, we, we shall see, motherfuckers. All right.